Shweta here, uh, ex-SSME, ex-Red Hatter, right now a student studying NLP, Artificial Intelligence from UK's University of Sheffield. And I was invited to give a short presentation. That's my uh, area of specialization. I'm doing my dissertation on that. So let's start with NLP. NLP is all the hype these days with ChatGPT and all. All of us must have used it at some point or the other. I use it often for my assignments. So uh, let's move forward. This session we will be covering introduction to NLP, what NLP is all about, why NLP, what's the significance in like software, and what's the significance in open source. Then we have the hyped about the, the market topic, chat GPT. Why exactly chat GPT? I'm not all for chat GPT, so I will be displaying the cons of chat GPT over here instead of the pros because all of us know the pros, we have been using it. And then I will be showcasing some uses of NLP in the industry, what all use cases we can have. Since this is a very short session, I won't be able to showcase any demos, but I do have uh, GitHub links for the code that I have already developed for uh, a few projects of mine that I'm working on. And uh, in your free time, please feel free to take a look at that code and check out what exactly is NLP all about. So before diving it into NLP, let me give you the basics of machine learning because NLP uses machine learning extensively. So machine learning is all about uh, ha having your systems make decisions for you without explicitly programming it. That's just a basic layman definition for it. And we have two categories, supervised and unsupervised, that we use. So supervised is like when we use it with label data, we have Dex data that we use it with to train the model, and there is unsupervised where there is no label for the data. That's when we call it unsupervised learning. So uh, when it comes to NLP, NLP is the field where we have our systems, our computer systems, understand human language, understand uh, speech, human speech, create human speech, create la uh, language, and then uh, you know analyze a huge amount of given text and make some sense of it. Get the context of what exactly is being say, said there and then try to process it and uh, give us outputs, whatever like the context is. So uh, NLP is a very, very, very vast field and uh, the only four things that we would be concentrating on in this session for like which are the major areas where it has been focused upon, the research has been focused upon. So those four things are, uh, the first one is language understanding. All of us must have used it, Siri, Alexa, voice assistants. Those are the uh, devices that actually interpret your human language and answer you accordingly or provide your outputs accordingly. Then we have text analysis and information retrieval. So for this, this actually is part of sentiment analysis and all of us use Netflix, right? Netflix, so the recommendations that we have on Netflix, that is based upon sentiment analysis algorithm. And that's how the more data you give it, the more recommendation, like you, the more plus signs, the thumbs up signs you give it for the content you are watching, the better it gets with the prediction. So that's how the sentiment analysis part works for Netflix. And then we have natural language generation. This is like chat GPT, all the chat bots, all the virtual assistants that we might have seen on any like uh, even on banking websites, when you go and ask them that, what is the amount that I've spent this month? And that uh, chatbot will showcase to you that, yeah, this is the amount that this current month we have been you know, expending or what exactly we have been doing with our account statements and stuff. It will showcase you all the details. So that is natural language generation. Because we call it natural language generation because it not only interprets what you are saying, but it also gives you an output in a human understandable way. So it's like a human language thing. That's why it's called natural language generation. Humans put the input in a human language form and then you can understand the human language in the same output. And future innovations, I would be talking about what all uh, social implications, like whatever social contributions NLP has had and how we are implementing it for social causes. So those are like the dissertation topics that I'm working on that will be covered in the last slide. So why is NLP automation significant? Because it can help you understand human language. It helps you bridge the gap between human language, human speech, and, uh, and uh, our uh, 
automation processes and our machines so that way it actually helps you uh, beautify i would say customer experiences it helps you bridge the gap between customers and humans and then it helps you make data driven decisions like if you have a huge amount of data you give it to an nlp model it will make some sense of it and give you a output that like this is the prediction for this given output that way so that in industry it actually helps you like realize even from feedbacks even from uh, like huge amount of uh, you know texts that yeah this is what the customer is actually trying to ask or this is what a open source developer is actually trying to achieve by doing this by doing this documentation or writing this amount of uh, you know uh, a data or like a text saying that this is what this code does so it will be able to make sense of it okay the examples now so this comes from my experience working as a subject matter expert and also open source developer so please take what whatever resonates with you over here so the first one is machine translation machine translation is like supposedly when we were working on cases and uh, there was a case from some region let's say china or korea and we don't understand the language we would have to wait for the other region to come and then you know the engineers to take up the case because there is always sensitive data on the cases we cannot just put it on google translator that's not how it works you can't do that so that's why we would have to wait for the other region to come up so in that way we could have an api of our own red hat could have an api of their own an open source api maybe that would help us analyze these things and we wouldn't have to like wait for another human to come up and work on the cases and there is also like for open source i would say localization of software as in uh, let's say if there is a user interface usually they do have it for some you know very good traffic websites when it comes to like train bookings flight bookings they do have it but uh, we should have it for more websites because english is the commonly used language but it should not be a barrier in any way that's why if there is like a website that has you know a flight booking thing and then somebody is trying to work on it and they can't you know analyze the buttons or can't understand what exactly is happening there so in those cases there should be like a nlp api we could develop one it's easy it takes effort but then it would be like a long term investment i would say that yeah that would help you like go through a lot of interfaces converting the language in just a gif then we have knowledge base automation we do have like our kcs all of us must have used it at some point of time so uh, for kcs what we do is like we have a generalized search we do a google search as well for our kcs articles instead of that we could have like for each product company could have their own kcs base where you make the search it should not be a generalized thing you just use a few words keywords and then the nlp algorithm that we have developed the nlp model that we have developed that would give you the predictions of what exactly those articles should be that you are looking for instead of you know going to google and doing the all generalized search it would be faster it would be more efficient then we have uh, social media monitoring this means uh, trends like let's say uh, there was a log 4j trend that happened a log 4j vulnerability that happened a few years back and we were uh flabbergasted with a lot of lot of cases over there and then each customer was asking the same question of how exactly can we resolve it how exactly can we you know how exactly our product is being impacted by this so for those things if we you know have those social media trends with us we would be able to allocate more resources accordingly and take steps whatever are like required at that point of time then we have virtual assistants this could help us like for developers when we are doing open source uh, open source contribution if it's a new github uh, you know code then it becomes really difficult for you to debug instantly and understand which classes are being used in this code so for that we could have virtual assistants guiding you to you know go through the module or find the module exactly where uh, the package the module wherever the code could be so it's not it won't be a 100% accuracy thing because nlp doesn't provide 100% accuracy it's around 80% 70% depends on the model but that way we would be able to analyze the model then we have uh, descriptive analytics and automatic insights i'll go through them 
really fast. So descriptive analytics, uh, we could have like, we have heard about sonar. Have we heard about sonar? Code quality tool. So those are like rule-based things, static rule-based things. So they do not have any dynamic things going on in there. It's just like a set of rules that have been written that analyzes your code. At times, it's not, I would say not at times, I would say 50% of the time it does make a mistake in indicating that your code is correct or wrong. Sometimes those APIs are necessary and it indicates, no, this should not have been here. So that way we could have dynamic programming using NLP, developing a code-based, uh, you know, quality-based tool that will help us analyze our code better. And automatic insights, it's again like feedback analysis and rating analysis, whatever is given, uh, you know, on cases or maybe on releases, what exactly the customer is expecting or maybe the open source people are talking about, what should be the newer trend or what should be a newer feature that should be added. Those things we could take into account. Now moving on to GPT. <clears throat> so GPT is like generative pre-trained transformer. I know it's like, it's a huge topic and it's very difficult to explain it. Uh, but transformers are something that are, uh, you know, better than neural network. If you have heard about neural network, transformers are step ahead. And it, it is based on sequence to sequence modeling. It takes larger contexts into account. That's all I can explain right now about it because it's really, really huge. And uh, the cons that I have found while working on GPT is there is no understanding whatsoever. The model never understands what I'm trying to say. It doesn't get the context most of the times. Second, if you put like uh, a question, uh, different phrase, it won't be able to make sense of it. If you like even use two or the in a different sequence, it won't be able to understand it or give you an answer accordingly. You have to be grammatically correct to get an answer out of it. Then you have bias. So if as a user, I am adding something to the system, the system learns, right? Every time you give an input to it, you type something inside it, it learns from that input. So if I have bias as a user, okay, if I am biased to a certain political, let's say agenda, and I'm adding that to the system, then it will give me output with bias. Okay, and every time you access the system again, you will keep on seeing bias, because that's how the generative model works. So for each user it's different, but if you as a user are trying it again and again, you will be able to see that bias. You could try it, you will be able to see it instantly. And then we have no real time knowledge. Of course it doesn't have any real time knowledge, it's not a human being. And there is no reason or explanation. That's something that we have been working on in NLP research areas because reasoning and explanation are really, really important at times because if like, you are giving an answer to someone and you cannot justify why that answer is that way, it doesn't make sense. So that's a very vast area of research in NLP. And then misinformation and inaccurate responses. Any of you have ever encountered any inaccurate response? So for me, any mathematical question you input, any mathematical question, because I am a student right now, I'm working on multiple assignments, it always gives me an incorrect answer. Always. It's not like even 80%, 70%, it's 100% of the time. So I would suggest never use it for mathematical equations. Don't do that because it's still not, you know, uh, developed for that kind of uh, inputs. Ethical considerations, whatever we are adding to it, it's getting uploaded to the cloud. It's getting uploaded to the open AI uh, cloud over there and it has all the data that we are adding to it. So of course it's like an ethical consideration because we are adding sensitive information at time. And then it becomes very, very, very difficult to understand where that information came from and yeah, hackers can use it if they have access to the cloud. Okay, now the last part of the presentation, this is like the dissertations that I am working on. The social cost things from NLP. So there are two things that I am working on. The first one is EDOS, EOSD, whatever you call it, explainable online sexism detection. Sexism has become very, very, very prominent on Twitter and Facebook and all those platforms. So we do work on, uh, I have been working on that and we try to identify like from a given text, we try to identify whether there is sexism or not what kind of sexism is there, who is accountable for that sexism, those kind of things we try to find using our research, using our model. And the second one is AI judge. 
this is a very uh, i would say like <coughs> that's like a 50 50 parts of it that people would accept it there are a lot of people who are against it because they think having something like an ai judge is a social uh, implication that people would start losing jobs because if you have an ai judge what's the point of having a human judge and why would there be lawyers at all what would be the case so ai judge also is like a very uh, interesting research area that we are working on currently. So what we do in these things is like, uh, we have something called trained validation and test. It's like for all ML algorithms. So you have, if you have like 100 test cases, 100 cases that are given to you, you use 80 as training, 10 as validation, 10 as test. And then when you have real time situations, you give those situations to your model and then it will give you a prediction. That's how it works for AI judge or be it for EDOS, the sexism part. So that's the research area that we are working on currently. I will be adding those GitHub links on the slides if any of you want to like take a look at the code. It has sentiment analysis. It has NLP uh, used pretty extensively and uh, bias and all those things. So yeah, you could take a look at it. We have worked on BERT, Roberta and uh, the other one. Yeah, the other forms of BERT itself, because BERT is like the best one right now in NLP. So those are the uh, algorithms that we are currently using. So that's it, guys. Thank you. Sorry for the delay.